Hi guys, Mr. John here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at this. Yes, it's a car stereo. But the tricky thing about this one, it's not a cheap Chinese stuff. This one was a genuine Philips installed in some Renault car. You can see there. You can tell from the shape that it's a stock piece. But it doesn't rock anything very, you know, nothing very special. It's just a cassette player and a basic FM tuner. But Where I am interested, and I guess you are as well, to see what the build quality inside looks like. Because I can tell from the weight that it is constructed like a brick. Pretty darn good. So, without further ado, let's try popping. Seems like the bottom cover can be popped off without any... Without Taking any screws out. Ah, I forgot to mention why is it here. Well, it is here because my neighbor got it for for free from I don't know from his friend or I don't remember. That's not the point. He got this for free in this kind of state. And he wants to use it, so he asked me, can I figure out the pinout for him, for him? I said, yeah, sure, why not? And make a video on the side. Okay. <laughs> the board looks packed. Well, I can't tell anything, you know, fairly specky yet, but, but the board looks nice. There are no flux residue. There is no flux residue. There is quite a big ass diode which says SG9AE, which I guess is 9M Shotky or something like that. Probably a polarity protection diet. Anyway, so let's let's now take the top cover off. And this one uses those pesky Torx screws. So I need to go and figure out which bit I need to use. Will you amazing the the first bit I just picked and it is the right one. How about that? And no, I did not take this scene apart. This video is as raw as it gets. This is the first take. And if I'm gonna screw it up... If I'm gonna screw it up, I will still upload it. But if I'm gonna screw it up very nicely, I ain't gonna upload it at all. And now I have a mosquito bugging me. It's not a mosquito, whatever it was. It doesn't wanna die! It's not dead yet. Get the hell out of here. Mr. Johnny is a very evil bastard. This is no flight territory. There shall be... Gun down. Hey. Probably don't. Oh. <laughs> this thing is built like a tank. These tins that I'm taking out... <sighs> are thicker. Damn it, are you kidding me? I'm pretty sure that the car it was um, the car that guy get, got it from was made had the body which used thinner metals than this cage. 
Oh. It just doesn't want to budge. Are you kidding me? Alright, I'll have to hit pause if it's gonna take me too long. Screwdriver. This is badass. Huh, finally. I mean, like, this stuff is. Well, no, I can bend it. You can bend there and you see if you want, but. It's pretty darn thick. Let me actually take a measurement. Point six millimeter. Huh. Kind of felt a bit, a bit thick. But anyway, we're in like flame. You can see that it is in pristine condition, if you ask me. There you can see a nice little plastic holder for the choke, so it doesn't uh, rattle loose. There is a TR220F package transistor or whatever it is. There, the tape transport looks awesome. There is another package tucked there. On the PCB as a heatsink. Pretty neat little device. The tuner actually is huge here. Oi, oi, oi. See this whole box? It's a tuner. Ah, sure. That's what I mean under genuine stuff. I mean, like, I don't know if you could see it, but that capacitor there says Nichiken, and I'm pretty sure it's not a fake. Built like a rock, really. I just, I was really happy to hear that he wants me to take a look at it because. This is gonna be a great, great example, a nice contrast to what I um, had deal with before. Oh, look at that, it's, there is a little solenoid also, see that? It's a little solenoid which, which pulls an arm, no, pulls or pushes an arm which activates a tape transport. What it does, I don't know. Perhaps it does this. Auto reverse. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, another video. Oh, another video. Ah, told ya. It is as raw as it gets. Okay. Oh, that's amazing, kind of. <laughs> I don't see this little couple of screws there. This one and this one holds ICs, but it's not as it's it. This thing has dual ICs. You can see one tab there. And you can see as another tab there. This black theme is really... Rather annoying, but... Well, what can I tell? Somebody bites me. Well, what can I tell that... These are definitely the output tracks, because they are 
exposed and on end of them they have RC network to ground it's a zobel filter or whatever it's called basically it's to make sure that uh, it's to dampen the oscillations yeah built like a rock great example of a genuine product which is not built down to a cost I mean like take a look at this take a look at the thickness of that back plate it's ridiculous I can guarantee you the bo car, the body of that car is made of a thinner material, thinner metal than this back plate is. Oh my god. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm just gonna go and figure out the pinup, make a little labels with them, eh, with electrical tape and just put a little symbol which wire does what or which wire is what for again I told you it's a it's a raw video was that that do you come another look there two Nietzsche con capacitors 22 microfarad uh, 16 voltage not bulged at all of course I wonder if the small caps are Nietzsche con as well they seem to be yeah so that's that and there is nothing bad I can say about the sort of job it looks alright here are those filter networks I was talking about to dampen the oscillation. And here are the two chips, one and two. Oh, positive. I'm running out of memory, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. What I meant to say is the positive and negative is a piece of cake to find. Negative sits on the chassis of the device, and positive is usually goes through a fuse or goes to the choke I mentioned yeah, it's just a basic sick uh, re-engineering of the circuit and outputs are those it's also bridge outputs so neither end of a speaker goes to ground both ends of the speaker go to those and if you can see we should have eight mm, tracks here one two three four Five, six, seven, and eight one is there. I guess. No, it's not. That's weird. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up here. You see that the build quality of this device is quite nice. Again, no flux, no nothing. Just a beautiful solder joints, which don't look like. Um, Maybe it is old enough actually not to be subject to lead free solder. However, not sure. There's some date code or whatever. Anyway. See, and they don't lie. They just say four channels, 15 watts each. Now I can't believe that. Um, bridge amplifier from 12 volts can output 15 watts into something like a 4 ohm load I have no doubt about it a good amplifier at 14.4 volts can do that now that I can totally believe but like 4 channels 50 watts eh, give me a break what a load of horse up alright thanks for watching see ya